We talked about, you asked before, what is the greatest national security threat to the United States? It's Donald Trump. And I'm gonna tell you why. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I agree, climate change represents an existential threat. He denies the science. You want to talk about North Korea? Real threat in terms of nuclear arsenal, but what does he do? He embraces Kim Jong-un, okay. a dictator for the sake of a photo op. Thank you. Putin, okay. you want to talk about Senator Russia? Harris, we're going to he do takes more. the word of the Russian I want to president stick to over the word of the American intelligence to to community here. when it comes to a threat to our Thank democracy you, and our elections. Thank you, Senator These Harris. These are the issues that are before us, Chuck. I'm, I hear you. Uh. And I believe and will put the Department of Justice of the United States back in the business of justice. We will double the Civil Rights Division and direct law enforcement to counter this extremism. We will hold social media platforms accountable for the hate infiltrating their platforms because they have a responsibility to help fight against this threat to our democracy. And if you profit off of hate, if you act as a megaphone for misinformation or cyber warfare, if you don't police your platforms, we are going to hold you accountable as a community. All of these social media companies and these online platforms, which are so powerful in their ability to impact perception about an issue and to influence behaviors. Let's be clear about that. There have to be standards. The president's tweets and his behaviors about this are just further evidence of the fact that he uses his power in a way that is designed to beat people down instead of lift people up. Frankly, when you look at what he's been tweeting today, directed at the whistleblower, um, directed at, at so many people, uh, you know, I, I frankly think that based on this and all we've seen him do before, including ta attacking members of Congress, that he frankly should be, his Twitter account should be suspended. Um, I think there is plenty of, of, of now evidence to suggest that he is irresponsible with his words in a way that could result in harm to other people. And so the privilege of using those words in that way should probably be taken from him. But doesn't that, I mean, play into certainly the hands of, you know, his, what, I don't know how many Twitter followers he has. I think it's in the range of 60 million who say, well, look, okay, now they're now, you know, the, the rich folks in Silicon Valley are just trying to cut out silence me and taking me off Twitter. I, I'm sure that that will, that will be said, but I, it, we have to also agree that when the President of the United States speaks, her words are very powerful and should be used in a way that is not about belittling, much less harming anyone. And this President has, I think, never fully appreciated that responsibility. And so what we see continuously, including in the last 24 hours, is a use of his words, Donald Trump using his words, in a way that could subject someone to harm. And if he's not going to exercise self-restraint, then perhaps there should be other mechanisms in place to make sure that his, harm, his words do not, in fact, harm anyone. And that's my point. What we want to make sure is that his words do not actually result in harm to anyone. I guess the question about you, you I know you wrote to um, Twitter and the CEO, uh, Jack Dorsey, and asked him to take away the president's yeah. Twitter handle, his account. How is that not a violation of free speech? I mean, the president has the same rights that you have, that I have, and how would that not just be a slippery slope where they have to ban, you know, half of the people on Twitter? I've heard that argument, but, but here's the thing, Jake. First of all, a, a corporation, which is what Twitter is, um, it does not have the, it has obligations, and in this case, Twitter has terms of use policy. And their terms of use um, dictate who receives the privilege of speaking on that platform and who does not. And Donald Trump has clearly violated the terms of use, and there should be a consequence for that. Not to mention the fact that he has used his platform, being the President of the United States, in a way that has been about inciting fear and 
potentially inciting harm against a, a witness to what might be a crime against our country and our democracy. And for that reason, I do believe that, he is, that it's clear that he has violated the terms of use. And I'm asking that Twitter does what it has done in previous occasions, which is to revoke someone's privilege um, because they have not, they've not lived up to the, to the advantages of the privilege. He has, he has lost his privileges and it should be taken down. And, and the bottom line is that you can't say that you have one rule for Facebook and you have a different rule for Twitter. The same rule has to apply, which is that there has to be a, 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 a responsibility that is placed on these social media sites to understand their power. They are directly speaking to millions and millions of people without any level of, of, of oversight or regulation. And that has to stop. Senator Warren, I just want to say that I was surprised to hear that you did not agree with me that on this subject of what should be the rules around corporate responsibility for these big tech companies, when I called on Twitter to suspend Donald Trump's uh, account, that you did not agree. And I would, I would urge you to join me, because here we have Donald Trump, who has 65 million Twitter followers and is using that platform as the President of the United States to openly intimidate witnesses, to threaten witnesses, to obstruct justice. And he and his account should be taken down. We saw in El Paso that that shooter in his manifesto was informed by how Donald Trump uses that platform. And this is a matter of corporate responsibility. Twitter should be held accountable and shut down that site. It is a matter of safety and corporate accountability. Thank you. Senator Warren, you can respond. So look, I don't just want to push Donald Trump off Twitter. I want to push him out of the White House. That's our job. So join but me, the way you know, join me the, in saying that his Twitter account figure, should be shut down. No, let's figure out. No. It, it, is, it does not represent a system of justice to say that the rules will apply differently to different people. This is a matter, you are saying, of holding big tech accountable. Yes. Holding big tech accountable because they have an outsized influence on people's perceptions about issues and they actually influence behaviors. We all have to agree this is their power. It is immense. Senator so, Klobuchar, so, so let you, me bring you in here. Your response. I'm not, I'm not you. finished. I'm not finished. I and so, what I am saying is that it seems to me that you would be able to join me in saying. The rule has to apply to Twitter the same way it does to Facebook. Look, I think all of the rules should apply across the board. I don't have a problem with that. So you will what join I me do in saying Twitter should shut down that account. Is that if we're going to talk seriously about breaking up big tech, then we should ask if people are taking money from the big tech executives. Ask the whistleblower. Ask members of the United States Congress. Ask the people who are prepared to testify about this president's lawlessness and obstruction of justice. Ask the people and the families in El Paso when that shooter admitted in his manifesto that he was influenced by Donald Trump's tweets. Donald Trump has 65 million followers on Twitter. And we have to take seriously the, 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 the weaponization of, of this platform by the president and the need, therefore, of a private corporation to be held accountable to say he has abused the terms and it could result literally in, the, in, the, in, in, in the, a threat to safety of, of human beings who are participating with the process of justice. There is not a part of you civically, constitutionally, that is concerned about the precedent of a private company taking the platform away from the president of the United States or some other elected official. It, Free speech does not condone or, or, or protect threats to the safety of other human beings. And so that is what we are talking about. Like, let's be really clear about what we're talking about, because this can go into some abstract law school debate. But the reality of it is we're talking about Donald Trump weaponizing Twitter in a way that could result in, in real consequence, including death. And we have to take that seriously. Do you think he puts people's lives in danger when he targets them in tweets? Absolutely. Do you think he knows that? Does it matter? Well, that would, then you, you might as well ask me, do you think he knows that when he sold out the Kurds that they're going to be slaughtered? The right. fact is he did it. The fact is that he is irresponsible. He is erratic. He does not, he is like a two-year-old with a machine gun. 
right? He doesn't understand the power of his words or his actions in the way that they will actually impact and could end other human beings' lives. So whether he understands it or not, look, he's the president of the United States. I don't actually care whether he understands it or not because he has shown that he is not responsible enough to self-regulate. He has shown he is not responsible enough to edit what he says. He, and, and here's the thing that but you have to But that's a problem understand. bigger than Twitter, right? You guys deal with one thing at a time and right. we can multitask. But I'm not going to sit here and say he's absolved right. from, from his unfiltered statements as president of the United States with 65 million Twitter followers that he's absolved because there are other mediums on which he could do it. The reality is that it's unfiltered direct to the human, to the, to the American public, what he speaks on Twitter. Yeah. And he has weaponized his words in a way that could result in harm to other people. And maybe I'm just kicking in as a former prosecutor, but I know that these real people, including members of Congress who have been the target of his threats, are in fear of their lives and their safety. And that should be taken seriously. And there should be accountability for that in terms of a private corporation that is facilitating it and by its own terms has a term of use. God, you were bad. I was awful. <laughs> you were really bad. Uh, if you had to be stuck in an elevator with either President Trump, Mike Pence, or Jeff Sessions, who would it be? Does one of us have to come out alive? <laughs>